Hello and welcome to this welcome video to on inverse functions. Now we've already come across the concept of a function, it's something that takes an input, does something to that input and spits out an output. Now all an inverse function is, is something that does the opposite of that function. That is, how could we get back from that output of 6 to the input of 3? What is the opposite of times by 2? Well divide by 2 would do the opposite and that would get us back from 6 to the 3. So the inverse function of timesing by 2 is dividing by 2. Now if we were to write this function here in the usual functional notation, so we have f of x is equal to... Now times by 2 is taking the input x and is multiplying it by 2. Just as we had if we had x here and we times it by 2, the output would be 2x, wouldn't it? Now what's the inverse function going to be? And the way we write it is using a minus 1 here. Now somewhere you might have seen this is with the inverse sine function. So you might have seen like sine to the minus 1 of x. And that basically means the opposite of sine. So that's where you've seen it before. It just means the inverse function. So that's the inverse now, how would we represent this division by 2? Well, if you had the input x, you would be dividing that input by 2. So that would be the inverse function of this function here. Let's take another example. Let's just say we had f of x is equal to x plus 3. Now, let's reflect on what this function does. This function takes an input of x. Remember, x is the input. It takes that input and adds 3 to it. So what would be the opposite of a function that adds 3 to the input? It would be a function that subtracts 3 from the input. So the inverse function would be the input minus 3. So some of these functions, we can just get the inverse function just by inspection. But for harder functions, this is harder to do. And I'll show you an algebraic way that will work for any function. So let's just a more difficult one, say f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Now you could again do this in your head. You'd think, well, if you have an input, you're timesing it by 2 and you're adding 1. The opposite would be to subtract 1 and then divide by 2. And we could construct the function this way. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first replace the f of x with y. And that is just for convenience. So we like, sometimes like to refer to the output as y. So we're going to replace f of x with y. Now, at the moment, we've got the output y in terms of the input x. Now, the inverse function is the opposite. We're getting the input in terms of the output so that we have the opposite. So in which case, we need to get x, the input, in terms of the output y. And another way of saying that is to make x the subject. So let's make x the subject. Uh, what do we need to do to make x the subject? We need to get rid of that plus 1. So let's subtract 1 from both sides, so that becomes y minus 1. When we subtract 1 from here, it gets rid of the plus 1. And then to get x on its own, we just need to undo that times by 2. So we divide both sides by 2, and then we're going to get y minus 1 over 2 is equal to x. And that reflects what we expected earlier. To do the inverse of timesing by 2 and adding 1, we're going to subtract 1 and then divide by 2. And look, we're subtracting 1 and then dividing by 2. But we've got to use the proper notation here. So firstly, note that we use f minus 1 of x. And also note that functions are usually in terms of x. So all we need to do is just replace the y back with x. So x minus 1 over 2. Now there are a lot of steps there, so let's do a few more examples. We've got f of x is equal to 3x plus 2, and we want to find the inverse. So step one, just replace the f of x with y. So we've got y is equal to 3x plus 2. Step two is to make x the subject. So we, to get rid of that plus 2, we're just going to subtract 2. And then to get rid of that 3, we divide both sides by 3. And then finally, our last step is just to write f minus 1 of x, because that indicates the inverse function. And we replace the y back with x, so x minus 2 over 3. And that would be the final answer. Right, second question. We've got f of x is 4x minus 1, let's say. So step 1, we write y equals 4x minus 1. We just replace the f of x with y for convenience. 
Then we make x the subject, so we add 1, get y plus 1 is 4x, and then we divide by 4 to get rid of that 4 there, y plus 1 over 4 equals x. And then the last step is just use the proper notation. So we've got f minus 1 of x is equal to x plus 1 over 4. Now, third question, we've got f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 3. Now, again, we just turn f of x into y. And at this point, we need to make x the subject. So you may have seen in a previous video uh, something I call the swapsy trick. And what the swapsy trick is, is that we can swap the thing that we're dividing by and the result. Just to illustrate, if I had 8 divided by 2 equals 4, you can swap the thing you're dividing by and the result. So you could have 8 divided by 4 is 2, and clearly that would still be true. So I'm going to swap the x plus 3 and the y. So we get x plus 3 is equal to 1 over y. And then we subtract 3, we get x is equal to 1 over y minus 3. And then just using the proper notation, f minus 1 of x is equal to 1 over x, because we replace the y back for x, minus 3. Now question 4. We've got f of x is equal to root of x plus 2. So as before, we turn f of x into y. Second step, we make x a subject, so we could square both sides to get rid of that square root. So y squared is equal to x plus 2. Then we're going to subtract 2, and now we've made x a subject. So the last step, as before, is just use the correct notation. So f minus 1 of x is, and you replace the y back with x, so it's x squared minus 2. And the last hard one is f of x is equal to 3x over x plus 1. So exactly the same as before, make that y. Now this is a bit harder because x appears multiple times. But just remember how we make x a subject in such a circumstance. We just isolate all the x's on one side and then factorise out the x. So let's multiply by x plus 1 first because we don't want this fraction. We're going to multiply by x plus 1. So we have y brackets x plus 1 because we times by x plus 1 is equal to, well, if we times that by x plus 1, we just get 3x. Let's expand out. So we have xy plus y equals 3x. And do remember that we isolate the x terms on one side. So I could do that by just subtracting xy, and that will get it over here. So we'll have y, because I've subtracted xy to get rid of it, is 3x minus xy. And then when you've isolated x on one side, you just factorize out the x. So we've got x brackets 3 minus y. And the reason we've done that is we now have a single occurrence of x, and it means we could just divide by 3 minus y to bring it down here. So y over 3 minus y is x, and that means f minus 1 of x is, replace the y back with x, x over 3 minus x. Now to finish off with, I've got these two test your understanding questions. So we've got this first one, which is f of x equals x plus 1 over 2. And I want you to find the inverse function. And then test your understanding too. I want you to find the inverse of this function. So x plus 3 over 2x minus 1. So you may want to pause the video here to have a go at these. Right, let's do it. So we just turn that into y. y equals x plus 1 over 2. Multiply both sides by 2. So we get 2y equal to x plus 1. Then we subtract 1, so we have 2y minus 1 equals to x, and that just means that f minus 1 of x is 2x minus 1. Now the second one, a bit harder, we do y equals x plus 3 over 2x minus 1, and we're going to make x a subject, so let's multiply 3 by the 2x minus 1 first, so y brackets 2x minus 1 equals x plus 3. Expand out, so we've got 2xy minus y equals x plus 3. Then we want to isolate the x terms on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that x. We're going to have 2xy 
minus the x, and that's not an x term, so I'm going to add y to get rid of it. So we, over here, we're going to have 3 plus y. Now, we've isolated the x terms on one side, so we factorise out the x, and you get 2y minus 1 is 3 plus y. Just divide by 2y minus 1, so x is 3 plus y over 2y minus 1. And then we just use the proper notation. So we've got f minus 1 of x is equal to 3 plus x over 2x minus 1. And well done if you got that right.